All right, welcome back, fellow coders, to this next lesson uh, in our series where we are building a uh, Spring Boot app with a React front end from scratch. In the previous lesson, we went through uh, our requirements document uh, here, and we highlighted all of our nouns, and we grabbed all the nouns and grouped them together into a list of nouns, and then we turned them into um, classes and then properties of classes. In this lesson, we want to dive into establishing the relationships uh, between any and all of these uh, classes. So first step is outline your classes with a property. Second step is uh, outline any relationships that may exist between them. Why do we care about relationships and what are they? Um, we care about relationships because this is going to help us map out our database structure. Okay, we're going to be do using a relational database. That's a, a keyword, a little hint, in, in uh, so as to say why we should be interested in the relationships between objects. So in a relational database, relationships between tables, therefore relationships between classes, because um, a class can represent the table, um, the relationships between classes is important because it will dictate how we set up our database structure. So that's why we care about relationships. So how do we define relationships and what are they? So in terms of relationships, there are um, there are three kinds. There's one to one, one to many, and many to many. Okay, those are that's it. That's all you need to remember in terms of relationships, in terms of a relational database model. Um, there are three types of relationships and by far the most common is one to many okay one to one doesn't tend to happen very much and then many to many is maybe in second place so if i was to order these in terms of um most popular or most frequently used i should say to least frequently used it's probably like this so um, i'll go through um how to determine what our relationships are in our um, objects here our classes so the first thing that i'll say is anything that's marked as a service um, like user service here and email notification service, uh, services do not have relationships. Uh, services are single classes. They're called singletons. They are, uh, you instantiate them once there's an object sitting in, in memory and running in your application for the life cycle, the lifespan of your entire application. It just sits there and it is used as, um, as needed. We just call upon it whenever we need to use it it performs a lot of the logic, a lot of the business logic, which is um, business logic is what makes my app different from any other app in existence, right? There's a lot of boilerplate. There's a lot of uh, code that is similar between applications. For example, a lot of apps have a way to log in, right? There's probably a user creation process and there's a login process. Pretty much every app that you'll ever use has that functionality. That's not, that doesn't make it unique, right? Facebook has a login, Instagram has a login, your online bank has a login, um, you know, an app that you might use for, I don't know, meditation has a login. All these different things have logins, doesn't make them different from each other. They're all more or less the same. It's the same thing, right? So that's not really that unique. What makes them unique is, you know, Facebook has, well, what Facebook does. What does it do? It allows you to post messages. It allows you to, um, or post, uh, you know, updates and, and comment on things. And, you know, your online bank allows you to, uh, you know, send money places um, and, and look and review your transaction history, take out a loan or something. Your meditation app allows you to search through a bunch of, you know, different uh, videos or, or lessons or whatever, so you can, you know, listen to them or something or watch them, right? So, each of those things that makes those apps unique is the business logic. And that's what happens in these services. Typically, these services contain business logic that makes that makes um, the code in here, that makes the, the app different from any other app in existence, right? So for these, we don't care about relationships. We just use a service as a one-off, you know, use it and, and throw it away. Well, not really throw it away, but um, use it and then be done with it. Uh, and move on with our lives. Whereas these guys here, these guys don't have the word service next to them. These guys are most likely going to represent not just a class, but also a database table. Okay, so we're gonna have an entire database table uh, assigned to uh, these guys because you wanna be able to store this information. When a user signs up, 
we want to store that information. When an assignment is created and submitted, we want to store that assignment information so that we can retrieve it later. Services don't really need to be stored. We just bring them up and use them. There's no, uh, they're, they're what's called immutable, more or less. So you don't, nothing really changes um, that needs to be stored inside of them. They just perform an operation and either return a result or don't return a result. They just modify some stuff outside and then they might store it here, right? The, uh, an email notification service or rather a user service will modify a user and then the user will be stored in the database. So the user service, although it does the performance of behavior to store the information, we don't actually care about storing um, the user service at all. We just care about storing the user. That's where this all comes from. So having said that, the next step is to figure out, okay, if, if these two are the only ones that uh, can be considered as having relationships, then what is the relationship between these two objects, right? Between a user and assignment, is it a one-to-many, a many-to-many, -many, or a one-to-one? -one? Okay, so the first place um, that I go that's usually the simplest is, is this a one-to-one -one relationship? Meaning, does, does one user have one assignment and only one assignment. In other words, does a, does a user create one assignment and only one assignment and then they're done? That's all, that's a maximum amount of assignments that can ever be associated with a user. So a student could log in, they can hand in their assignment and then they move on to another assignment, that's it. You have to create a whole new account to hand in another assignment. That doesn't sound very helpful, right? That doesn't sound very appealing. Um, so that's obviously, at least to me, it's obvious that's not the right fit. That's not the right relationship. So we're not considering one-to-one. -one. Fair enough. Examples of one-to-one -one might be like, I don't know, a, a user to potentially address or like home address. Usually someone only has one home address. Um, like if you were logging to your bank and you need to store your address, you would give them your home address or something. Um, and that would be a one-to-one -one relationship. The user has one address, right? Um, I don't know. That's just an example. You can obviously have many addresses. It's up to the, uh, it's up to the, the business logic and the, and the business analyst to make that decision. But you can make an argument that it could be a one-to-one -one relationship between user and address. Cool. So now for our user and assignment, uh, st sticking with our uh, example in front of us, um, is this a one-to-many or a many-to-many? -many? And this one can be difficult to figure out, uh, but I have a trick that I use. So the first thing is, does a user have many assignments or does an assignment have many users? Right, that's the first, like which way do we go here? There's a there's the side that, that you can say is the one side and then there's a side that's the many side. So which one is the one and which one is the many? Well, hopefully it makes sense to you that you would have one user has many assignments. One user, many assignments, right? That feels right to me. Hopefully that feels right to you. You log in as a user. You are, let's say you're a student. You're a student and you have to do 14 assignments. Inside of my bootcamp, we have 14 different assignments um, that we you know, go through and, and have you guys do if you're you know, wanting to get a job as a programmer and whatnot. You can check out the bootcamp, coderscampus.com forward slash bootcamp. Um, but yeah, that's what we have. We have 14 assignments inside of our bootcamp. So um, one user can have many assignments. So you might say, okay, cool, we're done. It's one to many, move on with my life, right? Now, you have to do one more check because oftentimes a one-to-many can also be a many-to-many. -many. Not that it can also be, but rather a better fit would be many-to-many, -many. okay? Because really the too-many side is what makes sense to us, right? If we put some spaces in here, um, the too-many and too-many, um, this part is the same for these two types of relationships. So we've satisfied the too-many part of the, of the relationship. User has many assignments, many assignments. But how do we figure out if it's a one to many or a many to many? So here's what I do. User has many assignments, but what about the other way around? Okay, well, what about assignments being mapped back to users? Can an assignment belong to just one user? or can assignment belong to many users, okay? And it depends on, again, the, the business rules. It depends on the business analyst and how you would want to um, make this work. But 
here's, here's an argument. Here's a few different ways to make the argument. Because really, either of these could apply. Let me give you an example of when many to many would apply. A user creates an assignment. Okay, a student user creates an assignment. Assignment one, they hand it in, uh, they complete it, they've populated it with all the stuff, and they hit submit. What happens when the user submits that assignment? It gets assigned to a code reviewer. So a code reviewer then needs to look at it. Well, guess what? A code reviewer is also a user. So the assignment now belongs to a different user, right? So that is many to many. That means that the assignment can belong to more than one users. It can belong to the student who created it and it can belong to the code reviewer who is doing the code review. If that's the model that we want to go with, if that's the structure and that's the logic that we want to follow suit or follow up with or whatever the word is, um, then we have a many to many situation because a user can have many assignments and an assignment can belong to many users. One to many, many to one, or one to many, one to many, right? So let me just map that out. One user can have many assignments, but then one assignment, assignment can belong to many users. So one to many on one side, and then one to many on the other side. So when you have two one to many's, one to many, and you have another, uh, you know, one to many, but in the other way around, right? Because we're doing it the other way around. Now we, this becomes, this equals uh, many to many. In other words, if you, uh, another way to look at it is to say many to many. Come on, there, many to many, right? That's another way to express many to many is the star dot 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 star, right? Whereas if it was one to many, it would look like this. You'd have one to many, and then on the other side, uh, the other side would actually be one to one. This is what a one to many looks like, okay? So what's important is this is the left side and this is the, the right side. This is user, one user has many assignments, and then this one is assignment, right? One assignment belongs to one user. Okay. Now that's we, we just made an argument that that's not the case that it's actually a many to many. But I just want to you know use our examples here just to help to fill in maybe some of the blanks that might be happening in your mind right now and not understanding what's going on. Um, so there's a left hand side of the relationship and the right hand side of the of the relationship. Uh, another way to look at this is the parent side and the child side. Um, this is the the different ways to do it. Okay. So which one should we use? Do we, if we want to use a one to many, then we should we should do this model where an assignment is forced to belong to just one user. It's a it's a one to one on that side. Okay, that's how this breaks down. On the right hand side of the of the relationship, on the assignment side of the relationship, the assignment back uh, maps back to one and just one user. Okay, whereas if it's many to many, uh, an assignment can belong to um, many users, right? I, you can do it like this as well. One assignment. That's probably the better way to, to spell it out. One assignment can belong to many users. One user can belong to many assignments. Okay. Um, okay. So the question is, which one should we use? Well, with the current state of our outline here with respect to the properties that we have, I think we have no choice but to use the many to many, because like I said, the assignment can be assigned to um, a code reviewer and then goes back to the student and back to a code reviewer, back to the student, maybe to a different code reviewer. Like it can really be passed back and forth between a bunch of different users. Therefore it can belong to a bunch of different users. Therefore, blah, blah, blah. But here's the curveball. That's, that's one way to do it. We can do it that way, but that's a little bit, um, like that's potentially a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. We can introduce another property here to get it down to becoming more simplistic here. So what we can do is for the assignment, we can add another variable here to say assigned to, okay? And this can be uh, of type user, right? That this assigned to can be type user. This is a string, uh, this is a string, this is a string, 
and status is also a string. Okay, so assign to could be a user data type. Okay, so what we have here is then we've we've made it a little bit more uh, a little bit more simplistic because assigned to um, the assignment is assigned to a user. So we're capturing this logic of who is assigned to this assignment right now. We have we've broken it up into two fields, two two properties, if you will. Who owns the assignment, in other words, who created the assignment, and who is this assignment assigned to? By the way, I cut myself this morning, and I am using my son's, uh, what is it? It's a car's Band-Aid. I don't know if you can see that in the, yeah. So, hey, they're, they're small Band-Aids. They feel nice. Um, they're better for dexterity. So, pro tip, if you're uh, someone who uh, cuts themselves um, by accident often, uh, on the thumbs, especially on the appendages, small Band-Aids. Uh, by you know child size band-aids they're, they're useful anyway sorry not useful information so let's get to back to here so do you see what I've done I've added another property so what does this do like I said it breaks it up into two now so now a user who created the assignment this can now be a one-to-many situation okay we can now not worry about using this situation anymore we can sort of delete that Right, we can move that aside. Um, I don't know how to represent that we're deleting this. You know, use some tildes or something. I don't know. We can say that we're using this one. So one user has many assignments, and one assignment can be mapped back to just one user, which means this is a one-to-many relationship. And the reason why I chose this one is just a, it's a little bit easier to implement, and it's a little bit easier to work with um, versus a many-to-many -many relationship. Um, so that's why I did that. So there you go. Now a user can be um, can have um, assignments uh, assignments. So this can be a list of assignment objects. Okay, that's sort of the, the data type. So the user can have many assignments, and the assignment um, can have uh, can be assigned to a single user. Right. So that's the one to many, and then um, the on the other side, this is essentially one to one, right? Is how we're doing it. So, uh, in other words, yeah, one to many is the overall relationship that we're talking about here. Okay. So, like I said, there's three types of relationships overall: one to many, many to many, one to one. And um, the way you map it out, you you use several of those three types of relationships to make the overall relationship. Like here, we leverage a one to many and a one to one to make the overall one to many. Uh, relationship and this will make much more sense once we get into the code and start to map this out uh, you'll see what I mean by this and then yeah then there's the many-to-many -many, which is just essentially just two different one-to-many relationships um, and that that implies that there's something called a join table in between but I don't want to get too bogged down in those details so um, cool that's that's what I think we can start with this is a very basic data model for the record we have two objects, a user, or two classes, a user class and an assignment class, and that's it. We have two, essentially two database tables. This is super, super, super simple. Most apps that I've worked on um, in the real world have dozens and dozens of tables, right? Dozens of relationships and, and complexities, and, and it, it gets to be a can of worms, but I'm, I'm trying my best to keep this as simple as possible so that it doesn't take me too long to implement this. Because remember, I'm building this for myself. I don't know if you watch the previous videos or not. I'm building this app so that I can use it in my own business. I'm going to be using this application, but I figured I might as well go a bit slower and teach it and provide you know some nice free content on YouTube for you guys while I go through this process. Because you never know what gems we're going to find along the way. So if you like this process, um, I recommend you give the video a thumbs up, a little cars thumbs up. Look at that. I couldn't have done that better. Um, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified when the next video in this series gets released. Um, and yeah, leave a comment. If you have any questions, if anything is unclear, because I'm sure there's something that's unclear, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my absolute best to respond to it in a very timely manner. Um, apologies if I'm not timely. It means I'm you know, putting out fires in my business, but um, please do leave a comment. If you have a question, if anything's unclear, I'm happy to help you here. Cool. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves. Happy learning and bye for now.